pour deux marchands de vin, or uh, the cowboy steak with red wine sauce. Um, for the red wine sauce, and you'll see with, uh, with French cooking in general, uh, shallots are a major ingredient, um, especially with sauce cookery. You'll also see shallots and vinaigrettes and uh, other things as well, but for sauce cookery, shallot is uh, a critical component. So what's going to happen is we're going to pan roast the, uh, the cowboy steak and then we're going to take it out of the oven and then we're going to make a sauce a la minute uh, or to the minute uh, in the pan. Bing, bang, boom. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take like five, uh, five, six minutes to make this sauce. You have the shallots chopped so that we're not wasting time. You know, when, when things start coming together at the end here, you want to move quickly. You don't want to, you want, you, you want to make sure all the things you need are already chopped and ready to go. Now I like to use a nice, small, sharp paring knife. It's kind of like the same way you would treat an onion, except it's smaller. And you do want to, now this will be strained out of the sauce, so it's not, you know, you're not looking for pretty shallots, but at the same time, the shallot is not going to be in the sauce that long. So you want to, you want to cut it small so as to get the maximum flavor out of the shallot. I mean, if I was throwing shallot into a sauce that I was going to cook for a half hour, I might cut the shallot into like six or seven pieces because I know it's going to be cooking in the sauce for a half an hour, but because I know this is only, it, it's, it's going to be a very short time, I want these shallots cut small. So I'm not being super careful here. I want it small, but it doesn't have to be perfect. If it was a garnish for a vinaigrette, that's a different story. Let's open the wine. So I've got a nice Cabernet Sauvignon. It's about a five dollar bottle of wine. I just want a nice, uh, decent red wine flavor. I mean, there's chefs, you know, they'll go out and they'll get the Gallo gallons and all that. And you know what? You're not really saving any money because you're not getting the flavor. So just spend four or five dollars for a nice bottle, get a nice reduction. All right, so we have our gourmet mac and cheese in the oven. We have our shallots chopped. We have our wine ready to go. We have our demi glaze. So we're all ready to execute. So now we're going to sear We're going to sear the uh, uh, Cote de Boeuf, or cowboy steak. I'm going to use some nice light olive oil, which I like to use for sauté work. If I had clarified butter, I could use that also, but I think olive oil is healthier, and so I think that's the way to go. Now what I did was, you'll notice on my, uh, on my website, when uh, we're th you, you can, you know, with things that are individually cryovacked, you can thaw them in the refrigerator overnight, or you can float them in cold water. And, and now this is a this is a big piece of meat, so it took a good 25 minutes in the cold water. Emphasis: cold. Please do not use warm or hot water because you think it's going to thaw it out quicker. You will totally. It is not a good idea. Okay, cold. <clears throat> cold water and remember overnight in the refrigerator is always the best way <clears throat> to thaw something I say float it in cold water because it's fast and if you're in a rush that will work alright so the pans getting nice and hot as always don't forget to season a little bit of salt and pepper and you'll see it all over my website a little bit of salt and pepper goes a long way so here I am seasoning the cow.
cowboy steak. By the way, this is a very nice certified Angus grain fed product. And uh, in France, or let's say if you go to Manhattan and you go to a uh, hot cuisine, a classical French restaurant, this would be served for, uh, for two people. And the Merchant de Vin that we're doing today would be a typical, a classic preparation as well. Oh, so we got a nice little sizzle going. So the mission now is to get that nice and brown. And then we're going to do what I call pan roast. Well, not what I call. What's called pan roasting. So we're going to sear it on the top, get it nice and brown, seal in the juices, and then finish it in the oven, which then turns it into a pan roasting operation. Okay, so we're looking to get some nice color on this coat of buff. Oh, look how nice. See? Now we're going to sear it on the other side. We'll pop it in the oven. And I see we're, we still have 15 minutes left on the mac and cheese. And that should be just about how long this roast is going to take. And then I'll show you how to check the doneness. Okay, so now here we go. The other side has been seared. And we'll pop it in the oven. And just about the time that the mac and cheese is ready, or, or ready to have the aluminum foil taken off, we'll, we'll take that uh, uh, coat de buff out and we'll, we'll give it a check and see where it is done-wise. And uh, so there it is. Okay, continuing on with the cowboy steak with the red wine sauce, the Cote de Boeuf Beau de Merchant de Vin. Um, we have the chopped shallots. We have the red wine sauce. Another element of uh, sauce work with a lot of the a la minute sauces or sauces that are made, you know, kind of like to order, is crushed black peppercorns. So I'm going to use the bottom of this pan. This is how we would do it in the kitchen. This is also when I make the steak au poivre. I'm going to rub some of this pepper into the into the steak, the steak au poivre. But for this, for this, what we're making right now, I'm just going to put a little bit of this into the sauce, into the red wine reduction, along with the shallots. And we'll take out our cook and we'll give that a test. Now, here's the Chef Michael way of checking, okay? Temperature. I don't like to go by numbers. Now this has the numbers, right? So I could check the numbers. But what if you didn't have this? What if you had just a, a, a metal skewer, a skewer or, a, or a fork? Okay? So I, I like, I learned by just sticking the skewer into the, what I perceived the middle to be. Hold it there for a few seconds. And it's ready. So now I'm going to leave this off because I can feel the heat on my wrist. So we're going to uh, hold this off to the side and now we're going to make our sauce. First we're going to degrease the pan. So you pour off the excess fat. And now I'm going to put in my shallots. I'm going to put in some black pepper. Move the shallots around a little bit, kind of get them nice and brown. Good 
Because what happened through the process of the pan roasting, some of, there was some gloss, some meat glaze that formed on the bottom of the pan from the steak itself. And what we're doing is we're going to get that flavor off the pan. Now we've always, when you're adding your alcohol, not so much with the wine, but especially if you're dealing with brandy or uh, something that's going to flame. In this case with the wine, it's not, so, not a big deal. But you want to get in the habit of pouring in your alcohol off the fire so you don't have a flaming accident. All right, so now we've got the red wine in the pan, and it's going to reduce down. And then we're going to finish the sauce. Okay, so now what we did was, I would say we put in roughly uh, a cup of Cabernet Sauvignon, maybe a cup and a half, and we're going to reduce that almost to sec, which is dry. Uh, not quite dry, but just, just before dry. And um, then we're going to add our demi-glaze. We're going to bring it to a boil. I'm going to check the consistency. I might even put a splash of water in there because I'm looking for... I don't like my sauces too thick. I like them nappé. Nappé means that if I put a wooden spoon into the sauce, right, that I, and I run my finger across, that you would see like a little road there. Or, or, or nappé, that it covers the spoon. But I don't like thick sauce. Now you're going to notice at the end, I'm going to strain it. When the sauce is finished, I'm going to put it through this chinois, it's called. In the kitchen, and sauce was kind of like my always my favorite thing. Seafood dishes, seafood appetizers, and uh, sauce was kind of like my specialty. So. I always had to have a perfect chinois. So we had the chinois in the kitchen that we were using, and then we had the backup chinois just in case, God forbid, a little hole formed in the chinois, which then would not allow me to have perfect textured sauce. Okay? So anyway, if you want a chinois for your home, let me know I can get it for you. Uh, they're a little on the pricey side. But for anybody who's doing Syria, do you need this? No. But if for perfect sauce, it's... Uh... Okay, so as you can see, the wine is almost at sec or dry. We're just about another second or so. Oh, yes. And now we're going to add our demi-glaze. Mmm. Oh, yes. Oh, no. Oh, Chef Michael, please. Okay, a little salt and pepper. Well, not pepper, it's plenty of pepper in there already. Just a little salt. Mm. See the texture? See how nice? Okay, that's what we want. Okay, now we're going to turn it off. We're going to put it through the strainer. Or the chinois. Now we want to, we don't want to lose any of the sauce. So we're going to use a rubber spatula. Real quick, it's a hot pan. You don't want to, you don't want to melt the rubber spatula. Just real quick like. Okay. Now, with a little ladle, you just push it through. Whatever's left in the in the chinois. This is a very this is a pretty this is going to be a pretty strong red wine sauce. The next thing is we're going to finish it Monte au beurre which is fancy talk for finishing it with a little bit of butter. Okay. We'll just stir that in there. 
And what that does is the Monte au Beurre is a classic finishing of the sauce. And what it does is it gives it shine and it, and it enriches the sauce a little bit. Now this, uh, the Cote de Boeuf, which is sitting off to the side, and uh, uh, I would say, uh, let's see if memory serves me correct, that was in the oven after it was brown, I guess about uh, 12 minutes, 13 minutes. Okay, now we're going to pour it in the sauce. Look at that sauce. Oh, like nectar. Look at that. That's just gorgeous. And I'm just going to cut it diagonal. Or you could serve the steak whole too. Just put the whole steak on the plate and 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 pour the sauce over it. Okay, and then we'll take it from the platter, and this is how it will look. Uh, served up. Now you could serve haricot vert, green beans, baby carrots, whatever vegetable. Really the point of this exercise is just to show you how to heat up the mac and cheese, how to show you how to make the sauce, and how to deal with the steak. Now I might have mentioned this before if I didn't. Also the cowboy steak when it came out whole, you can serve it whole on the plate for one person and then just pour the sauce over the top. But here's the rule. If you're going to cut the steak to show off the inside, then you want to make sure the sauce is underneath. In other words, you don't want to pour the sauce over the beautiful red meat. But if you're serving the steak whole to one person, then you can pour the sauce uh, directly over the top of the steak. So there it is. Bon appetit.